So hello everybody, it is time for another Power BI video. This time something that you requested again, and it is auto machine learning. So this is Microsoft's proposal solution to self-service artificial intelligence, basically. So to make machine learning uh, good, both for business users, business and analysts, um, analysts and data scientists, okay? So the the idea is good, the execution, not that happy about that. Um, I had tons and tons of problems, we will go through it and you'll see. Uh, I'm going to try to reproduce uh, and create one machine learning algorithm, you'll see, we'll see how far we can go. And uh, it, it needs work, it definitely needs work. This this is a preview feature, right? So it is what it is. Um, but um, let, how about we get started and I'll tell you and you'll see. And no matter what, I really recommend you that you test this yourself. Just because it's not working for me, it doesn't mean that it won't work for you. Depending on your skills and your abilities, you might make it like, you know, super easy and it works. So give it a go. Don't just take my work for granted. Okay, so to create a machine learning algorithm in Power BI, you need to have a pro premium license, which for me is the biggest issue of all. I, I don't understand why only people or companies with a lot of money should have access to self-service machine learning. It's just beyond me. And it might be a technical feature and it will come to pro. Fingers crossed. Because, you know, Microsoft needs to make money out of the development they do. Absolutely. Charge? Charge? Charge for usage, for model, for, I don't know, there's a lot, of, there's different ways to do it. So charge companies. So it shouldn't be locked behind the huge paywall. So that for me was the biggest turn off at all. And I wasn't going to do a video until you asked me to. So if you have premium, hallelujah, you have these available to play with. And I'm going to show you how it works. So even if you don't have premium, you'll see that at the moment you're not losing anything, to be honest. Let's go. So to be able to create a machine learning algorithm, you need to do it in a data flow. So you need to create a data flow. So we're going to add a new entity. No, we're on the new new data flow and say, okay, this should work. So I'm going to... Here's the thing. This is... Um, a premium tenant owned by Microsoft that I have access to, okay? And I don't have access to an on-premise gateway. So I tried a million ways to get a data flow to work and you wouldn't. So I tried a CSV on my computer that needs data uh, gateway. That was a no. That's when I realized, oh, there's no data. I don't have access to any data gateway. I should fix that. The next one I tried Azure SQL. No, I tried uh, to put the data in, you know, like, uh, what is it? Here, blank table. It didn't work. Nothing worked. And then I was looking at the Microsoft example and they put it on GitHub. And I said, okay, let me put it on GitHub. <laughs> Maybe it worked. And it didn't work, but the day after, as today, it, it suddenly was refreshing. Don't know. So fingers crossed it will work, otherwise we will use the other one that we have. So test CSV. I'm going to paste the link in there. And what we're going to do, <laughs> oh my God, what we're going to do, I have two videos on how to predict YouTube subscribers. I did manually, I did using Azure services. And now I'm going to use the same thing to predict, that was when I would reach 10,000, this is going to be when I reach 100,000. That was the goal. So you can compare. So download the data, put it in a CSV and say, okay, let's go. Um, next. So what I'm doing now is I download the data from YouTube, put it on GitHub because I couldn't find any other way to do it. And, you know, just feed in the data flow with that data, basically. So this should be a date. Oh, 
Um, that's not working. Text. Uh, let's see if we do like that. What is it? Uh, like that? I never remember. Okay, we got it. So now we have a date and then we have watch time, views, subscribers, thumbnail impressions and thumbnail impressions click through rate. Uh, we're going to give this name YouTube data. So we're just loading data into Dataflow. Okay. And YouTube data flow. Let's save our data flow. And then refresh. I, did, I, I got so many problems with refresh that you wouldn't believe it. So I would go and test something else because I didn't know what's going on and then go back and then I was trying something and then you said, no, you have an old refresh version and you have a newer refresh somewhere. So if you are trying this, refresh, refresh, refresh as much as you can refresh <laughs> so you don't get any kind of I don't know. For some reason, they have to be paired, and if you refresh here, it doesn't refresh there. I don't. I don't know what was going on. It worked. We have data, and it refreshed. Yes. Okay. Good. 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 Now, how do you create a machine learning algorithm? Do you see the brain in here? I love the icon. I think it's great, actually. So, if you click on there, add a machine learning algorithm. Awesome. So select the outcome data that you would like to predict. We wanted to predict a date. Okay, so I want to say 100,000 subscribers. Which date will that be? Next. And then... It says general classification, identify the category or class an entity belongs to. What? And that's the only one I can choose. We've selected relevant inputs from your target and related entities. I mean, uh, all of them are, okay, whatever. YouTube sub prediction. And then it creates three entities. Um, I don't know really. I think the first entity is all data, and then it creates an entity for test data. No, for training data, sorry. And then it creates another entity. Now now we're playing again. Uh, so it creates three entities. One, I think, is the entire data. I'm not sure. The other one, it is the trained data. And the other one is the uh, test data. So what it does is it takes... This is around 2,000 rows. A little bit less, but 2,000 rows. So it takes some of this data, some, some of these rows, and it trains a model. So it creates a model with that. So it says, okay, this model should be predicted with this calculation. And then it has some data left. So it takes that calculation and then goes into the rest of the data and says, tries to predict because it has the actual results in here. You can see how good the model is, okay? So it's not going to refresh. It didn't refresh the last time either. So I'm, I'm not even going to... This is going to be a bad video. I apologize for that. But 
So here's all the data, I think. This is the training data, what I meant, and this is the testing data. And here in machine learning models, you'll see that this is the learning model that chose to predict the date for the subscribers. Um, it says already, what I think is just, is, or what I read is that now it's tr starting to train the model. You can't not do anything until it says here trained, okay? And as you can see, it doesn't say it. I left this running and um, the next day I found that the model not only refreshed, but it was trained also. So it's only 1700 rows. It shouldn't take that long. But because it's not even it's not even refreshing, it's not going to work because I, I couldn't make it work until I actually managed to get the data flow to refresh. So, um, I don't think it's going to happen. I'm sorry guys. I've so this is the one that I actually, after a lot of trial and errors, I managed to not only get refreshed, but to get trained. It's the same data. What I found is if I get the same name, it's somehow, I don't know if it has any cache version, but it, it just was complaining about the data mismatch when it was a new data flow. So I just gave it random names. That's why the names are so bad. Oh my God, this is going to be a really bad video. So sorry. So here is my machine learning model. As you can see, it was trained. And once you've managed to get your machine learning trained, you can go in here to be the performance report. I also found that the performance report is in here. So this performance report is tell you how well the model is or how good the model is, sorry. Uh, so you can see that it's 1,660 rows and it used 152 for validation. 1,400 for training. Do you remember the training entity and the uh, uh, testing entity? So this, it used 1,400 rows to train the model. It's obviously too little that data. I, I can get more data from Europe, but... And this is um, for validation. It's still, the performance was quite good, actually. I thought it was going to be much worse thinking that, you know, it was so little data. So then it, I think this is absolutely brilliant. The, the actual thing of creating, you know, the interface of creating a machine learning algorithm is very intuitive. It's good. It's good. I, I wish there would be a little bit more explanation as to uh, what those different models are for, especially if it is for business users. If it's not meant for business users, then it's good enough because analysts and business anal and data scientists probably know, or you can Google it either way. But I really like the, you know, that step, step, choose the model. What do you want to predict? I think that was really good. This is also very good once you learn, once you read, because there's a lot of words in here. So here it is. I think this is the most important one, 92% model performance. So you, you have to decide yourself, is it good enough or not? Uh, you can see here how the actual model perform, and I think this is very, very good once you understand what it says. And it is explained in here. So here's the thing. This is for the, this should be 352 points in there because this is the validation. And it says in here, it predicted 369 when this was actually 31 subscribers. Okay. And then here, so this is how, you know, the values that it got wrong. And as close as you get to the line in here is the values that are got right. Okay. So there is a lot of dispersion as to the values that got wrong. So probably to try to feed more data to reduce the spread. And then you have residual errors by subscribers. Distribution of the percent of average error for different values in the sample data set. I haven't actually got into that and see what it is. 
I got too upset <laughs> with the other steps. And then you have here training details. Again, uh, input provided, the training rows, how many interactions, what was the actual model that was used. This is the, the because you run 25%, how good, 25 times the algorithm to, to run through the 352 values, how well it got it. So it is between 80% and, what is it, 87. And then uh, data, I don't know what this is. Yeah, so let's give it another world and see if this refreshes. It, it, was, it was a little bit buggy for me, I, I don't know. And then once I got the mother, what do I do with it? I'm still <laughs> trying to figure that out. And I have spent so much time trying to figure this out that there is no more time left. I mean, I just can't spend more time testing this. So hopefully somebody else can do a better job than what I'm doing here to showcase this feature. Uh, so here you say apply the model. Here I was using the wrong column. so. That's why the model won't work. But once you apply the model, you, you will create this test and reach model. And in here, you will get the result and the explanation. And I understood nothing of that. So I have to read more to see how on earth I need to use that to actually get a result of what I want, which is a date. And that should be much more clear. But this was a regression model, by the way, not a classification model. Uh, so, summary, I found working with data flows was painful. Uh, the, the actual user interface to guide you to create the machine learning algorithm was gorgeous, was very, very good done. Once you create a model, it's still a big question mark for me <laughs> how to actually predict anything. So it needs work. It needs a lot of work. And, you know, there's like buttons everywhere, like Power, Power BI surveys. You have like buttons absolutely everywhere and you go back and forth. And I got lost a lot of times. And then one thing when I was going to, I wanted to delete these, but you can't delete these because they are connected to your model. So I tried to delete the model and I couldn't. It didn't allow me to delete the model. The only way for me to delete the model, it was to delete the data flow. Otherwise it wouldn't go away. And, you know, at that point it was like, okay, no, that's enough. I don't want to do this anymore. So here's the deal. I'm going to wait for version two of machine learning and then we'll give it a go again. Uh, I'm finding this way too buggy for me to actually wanted to give it a go again. Okay, so what are your experience? Is it working for you? Have you tried it? Again, give it a go. Give it a go. Just because I didn't make it work, it doesn't mean that you won't make it work. Just give it a go. If you have premium, test it. Let us know and say, Ruth, you're wrong. It works beautifully. You have to try it again. And once they fix a new version, I will. I promise. Because I think the the idea is good, it's great. It's just that the execution is not there yet, okay? Okay, I'm going to shut up now. Sorry, it wasn't... I don't think it was a useful video, but maybe it's a useful video in the way that if you're getting stuck, you can come here and see if I have actually managed to move a step forward than you might be at. So have a great day and I'll see you again on the next video, okay? And uh, bye.